Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today's project is a checkered chunky knit blanket. As you can see, I've made mine three squares across and five squares long, so 15 color blocks in total. The final measurements of this project are 45 by 60 inches. It makes a really nice big blanket when you're all done. For materials needed, you're going to need four skeins of one color and four skeins of another color. I purchased four of this gray color and four of the white that you see here. I ended up using more of the white than I did of the gray, so I have a little bit left over, but I did need to go into this one, so it was definitely worth it to buy four of each. You're also going to need scissors, a lighter, and a measuring tape is helpful as well. I'll put the exact colors that I used in the description of this video, and let's get started. Our very first step is setting up and planning what we want our blanket to look like. So I would like the first row of my checkers to go white, gray, white. I've also unraveled them a little bit just to make things easier on myself. Whatever pattern you'd like your first row to look like, go ahead and set that up for yourself now. First step in making our checkered chunky knit blanket is making a slip knot in our first color. For me, that's white. So I'm gonna take my white yarn and make a loop and pull my working yarn through that loop and pull tight. I want my slip knot to be approximately three finger widths in size. The important thing is to keep your loops consistent. So I'm gonna be pulling loops through and pulling another loop through here and you want that loop to be about the same size as your first loop so we're going to keep pulling loops through until we get to 10. I'm gonna move to our gray. To connect the gray, we're gonna leave ourselves a little bit of a tail, like maybe 10 inches or so, and pick up the last loop that we have and insert the gray and make a loop. Okay, so now we're going to keep pulling loops through. So we've got two gray, and we're gonna do 10 of our gray. Grabbing our gray color and inserting our white making another loop and then continuing on just like that. As you can see, we've got our tails here. We're not gonna worry about that for now. We can weave them in at the ends after. For now, they're just fine as is. For the next row, what we're going to do now is start pulling loops upwards. Instead of pulling a loop to the right, like we were doing to make our chain, you're gonna pull a loop and it's gonna sit up like that. So I'll just show you again. You're going to pull a loop up like that. It's gonna sit up and then we're gonna start working this way. So in the top of each loop that we have, we're going to pull up a loop and it's gonna sit like that. Now to move on to our next color, 
we need to link them together in a way because if we just made our white and then if I just moved on to my gray here, they would end up only being connected at this junction and they would end up being almost like three separate blankets that aren't tied together. So at every point where we move on to the next color, we need to go white over gray, gray over white. Makes a little cross here and we pull down tight at the bottom. And then I'm able to continue on with my gray because I've secured them together, pulled them tight down at the bottom. Same deal here. We're gonna go gray over white and then white over gray to get it back in its original position and pull tight down at the bottom. Now we get to continue with our white. To move on to our second row, we're now going to be working this way, left to right. We're going to take our white yarn and go into our last loop here and pull up another loop. Then we're gonna keep going across into our 10 loops and pull up new loops. Now again, to go this way, to go to our next color, it's the exact same thing. We're gonna take gray over white, cross them down, and white over gray to get it back into position. And tight cross down at the bottom. Now working on our gray, we get to do the same thing pulling a loop up into each existing loop that we have there. And onto our third color, white over gray, pull tight, and gray over white. Onto our white, We're gonna carry on like this. It's the exact same method all the way. I'm gonna meet you at the end when I've got enough of my square. One thing to note though is that I do have 10 loops going across. The height of the loop is not the same as the width, so I'm gonna need more than 10 loops going up in order to get a perfect square. So my square here is about 14 inches. 14 inches. I'm just gonna keep that in mind and keep measuring as I go along so that I end up with approximately a square.
My squares are approximately 14 inches in width and I've measured that they're just under 14 inches in height or in length. So I'm gonna just leave it at that and be happy. I did 10 loops across and this ended up being 16 rows. So that's helpful for me to remember as I move on to my next row that all my squares, I can make them 16 rows um, going up to make them approximately a good looking square. Now is the part where we need to switch colors. We've done the first row, white, gray, white. Our next row is going to be gray, white, gray. This part here, I'm going to be switching from white to gray and it is your choice how you do it. You can either tie a knot or do the burning method. I prefer to do the burning method just because I find it a little bit more seamless. What we're gonna do, we want the gray to start right here, right at the end of where our white is. So I'm actually going to pull this last loop out, but keep it marked with my finger and thumb. So I'm gonna pull this loop out and snip it right here. Just pull away these little fluffies. And there's a plastic cord in the middle. So you are able to actually melt the two together. I'm gonna take the yarn that I am attaching, my gray. Um, I'm gonna light it. Be careful, obviously. And attach it to my white and hold it together for a little bit. It is quite warm, so don't touch it right away, but honestly, it cools down fairly quickly. And then I kind of like smush the two plastic cords together. You can feel the two cords in the middle. And I sort of just make, make sure that they're being like smushed together. So there we go, it's pretty seamless. Then I pull up my previous loop, which finished off this row, carry on and start my next square, which is now gray. Now at this point, we have to do the same thing. Keep your gray that you want in one spot and we're gonna be replacing this gray. I'm not gonna pull it out because remember we were crossing over. So what I'm actually gonna do is just pull it this way so I make my loop a little bit smaller. I'll just show you again. So this right here, I'm marking with my thumb and forefinger where I want my white to now be. I'm gonna pull my loop out a little bit, not all the way out though. Do not pull it all the way out. Keep it tiny. And cut it where you want your white to go. So again, taking my white, kind of finding that little plastic in the middle, lighting it, and then attaching the two together carefully, smushing the little cords in the middle. Because I pulled it out to make room to connect them, I'm gonna bring my loop back up to where I wanted it, just like that. Remember that you can't just keep going with the white, you have to cross and cross. So we've connected, we've crossed, and we're good to go. One last color change here. Let's keep this white out of the way. We want this white to change to gray. 
So I like my loop at this size, so I'm gonna kind of mark it with my thumb and forefinger, pull the loop out. It's a little bit tough to pull, so you gotta be a little bit forceful, but keep the loop in place, just make it smaller and keep it marked with your thumb and forefinger and then snip. Pull your white loop back to where you wanted it, like that. That was a little too far. Okay, like that. And then remember, we have to cross our yarns over again because we attached it, but we still have to cross every time we move to another color. So cross and cross. And now we can pull our gray and start our gray square. So it's gonna be the exact same method that you've been doing the whole time. Obviously your colors are just now in a different position. So gray over white, tight, white over gray, and then carry on. If your color runs out partway through when you're working on one of your colored blocks, you have two options. You can either tie a knot like this um, and just continue going, but I prefer to burn them together. We look for that plastic cord in the middle of the yarn. Light it and attach together. Just continue on. All right, so we are all done, all of our rows, and just have to do the very top finishing row here. If you are familiar with uh, making chunky knit blankets, then this will be the same technique and will be familiar to you. What we're going to do is, you'll have finished off your final row here, and this will be your last loop that you'll have completed, or if you finished off on the other side, depending on your row count. It's the same technique, just on the other side mirrored. What we're gonna do is make a loop just like you would do for starting another row. However, you're gonna make it bigger than you would a normal loop. You're gonna go into the second loop and make that one bigger as well. So it's like you have two little bunny ears. This bigger loop is going to eat this loop. So you need to make the loop big enough that it's gonna be able to eat the second loop or go over top of the second loop, but not so loose that it ends up looking sloppy. I don't really like how big that looks, so I'm actually just gonna go back and tighten it the tiniest bit. Then you're gonna make another loop, this loop, is going to eat that loop. And again, another loop, larger in size. This loop is going to go over top to eat that loop. So keep doing that all the way across and I'll show you what happens when we get to the next color. At this point, we're about to go into our next color, into gray. Remember, normally in our blanket, we would be crossing the colors over. We don't need to do that for this final row. We're going to just make a loop with the gray, same bunny ear size. 
this white one is going to eat this gray one and now they're connected so now we carry on with the gray okay now there we go we're all connected Now the last one here at the corner, same technique. We just bunny ear it over, and then we're gonna tie a knot in this corner. So I snip off about 10 inches, leave it a little tail there, and then we're gonna tie a knot in the corner. It doesn't have to be any kind of fancy knot, just anything that's not too obvious and you know is, is gonna hold decently. what you're going to do now is with this little end we're going to weave in the ends so go into your yarn and work in and out with this tail just in various places wherever it can fit We have a bunch of other tails to weave in, so same deal. We have to tie up here. We've got two other tails here down at the bottom from when we attached our initial yarn. It's basically going to be the same technique. You're just going to go in, tie a little knot, and then weave that tail in. And there we have it. We're all done our checkered chunky knit blanket. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please drop any questions that you have below and don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. Thank you.